There we go. I just went through a 70 degree temperature swing from Bali to the Arctic of Canada, so I figured why not throw the all new DJI Action 6 against the big dogs in an extreme cold test. Minus 30 to minus 40 Celsius is what we're dealing with, and one of these cameras ran for four hours while another one got eaten by a fox. For a simple battery test, things got way more complicated than I thought. I'm the Jaunting Ape, and this is your extreme cold weather action camera test. Okay, so this is minus 37 here in the Arctic, and I've got the Action 6, the Action 5, the Nano, and the GoPro Hero 13. And we're going to run 60 frames per second and see how long they last in this minus 37, probably a 55 wind chill. All 4x3 aspect ratios, except for the GoPro is 7x8. All 60 frames per second except for the Nano is 50 because that's all it's got. And we'll see how long these guys last. One of the coolest things about being in the Arctic in December is that for the few hours of daylight we get, it is all golden hour. All three DJI cameras are producing very similar images while the GoPro Hero 13 clearly stands as the odd one out. And maybe it's the rule of differences, but I actually prefer the look of the GoPro over the other three here. That said, with all four cameras sped up in post to 1500%, you can see something strange happening with the GoPro's stabilization. Now let's talk battery life. All four cameras started together at minus 37, and the first one to tap out was indeed the Hero 13 at 48 minutes and 26 seconds. Next was the Nano, which I had attached to the Vision Dock, and it made it to 70 minutes and 54 seconds. Thirdly, we have a DJI Action 5, which bowed out at 82 minutes and 2 seconds. This is proving to be a real pain in the you-know-what. I didn't have the memory card in the Action 6. I was going with the onboard storage, and it, it didn't quite make or two to the dead battery. So we're doing it again here. It's 1.30 now and the sun is just about down. So, gotta get the results I'm looking for. 60 frames per second. I think it would be absolutely pig-headed of me to leave out the DJI Pocket 3 in these tests. After all, it's the one that's been with me the longest and it absolutely deserves a spot here. After retesting the DJI Action 6 because of the internal storage filled up, I was surprised to find it recorded 66 minutes and 6 seconds before that 50 gigabytes was full. In this test here, the Pocket 3 shut down at 70 minutes and 4 seconds and the Action 6 pushed on through to 85 minutes and 53 seconds. So here is the final result. In fifth place, the GoPro 13 is shutting down at 48 minutes and 26 seconds. In fourth place, the Pocket 3 at 70 minutes and 4 seconds. Third place goes to the Nano on the Vision Dock at 70 minutes and 54 seconds. Second place is the Action 5 running for 82 minutes and 2 seconds. And with 3 minutes and 51 seconds ahead of the Action 5 is the Action 6 coming in at 85 minutes and 53 seconds. And next up, we're going to be running the time lapse, and this is where I was totally shocked. These tests are pretty hard on the cameras and the batteries, too. I've been having troubles waking them up, and it's been a little bit scary, but they've been coming back to me. So I think our Action 6 is toast. Oh, it's cold, like look, it's super cold. The following morning, things got super spicy with the temperatures dropping down to minus 40. Wind chills pushing it into the negative 60s for the time-lapse comparison. The first thing I noticed was the DJI Action 6 showing some dark fluttering, which I suspect might be part of the variable aperture starting to freeze up. As for the results, the Nano definitely did not like the super cold shutting down after 21 minutes and 6 seconds. All cameras were set to 10 second intervals and recording time is calculated by the length of the footage against a 30 frame per second timeline. The GoPro made it just shy of 2 hours, stopping at 116 minutes and 30 seconds, with the DJI Action 5 pushing much, much further, finally stopping at 202 minutes. 
The Action 6 kept on going, breaking the four hour mark with an incredible 246 minutes and six seconds. What's even more crazy is that after letting everything thaw for a good hour, none of the cameras had completely exhausted the batteries. The GoPro still had 22% remaining with the Nano showing a completely dead vision dock, having the camera itself read 99%. The Action 5 was still holding on to 66% of its battery of life, and the Action 6 takes the cake again with a whopping 72% left. After an incredibly disappointing run with the Nano, I set it up alongside the Pocket 3 the following morning, but this time something knocked it off the tripod almost as soon as I left. Temperatures today have warmed up slightly to a balmy minus 38 degrees, and when I came back to check the cameras, I was pleasantly surprised to see they were both still recording, and I gave the Nano a little prop back up. 10 second intervals and time calculated against the 30 frame per second timeline, the Pocket 3 powered through to 147 minutes and 30 seconds of real time. The Nano did much better this round, pushing to 172 minutes and 30 seconds. And here's how all five cameras stack up against each other on the time-lapse test. In fifth place, the GoPro Hero 13, recording 116 minutes and 37 seconds of real time. Fourth place goes to the DJI Pocket 3, powering through 100. 47 minutes and 30 seconds. In third place, the Nano, but not without an asterisk. Its first run at minus 40 shot it down early at just 21 minutes and 6 seconds, but using the second test as the contending result, it recovered with 172 minutes and 30 seconds. Second place goes to the Action 5, holding on for 202 minutes on the nose of real time, and hats off to the DJ Action 6 in first place absolutely dominating the test with 246 minutes and six seconds same intervals same arctic conditions one clear winner i came back south here now it's a little bit warmer it's minus 15 not minus 40 which is a, a big difference if you were wondering earlier about the action 5 versus the box it beat up my stand a little bit but the camera itself didn't take much damage there's a few little bite marks here around the lens cover but the glass is intact now as for the action 6 i was extremely lucky to pick this up i was in indonesia when it came out on november 16th and they weren't getting one there anytime soon so i called back to canada here to visions which is where i buy all my dji stuff and they told me i was looking at a five to six week wait which wasn't going to be in time for when i came through but when i went through the taipei airport on my transfer it was just here in the airport here in Taiwan and I, they're telling me that they've got one action six left one standard combo for about six hundred dollars Canadian uh, they don't have one in Canada as far as I could see it's a uh, quite a long ways away so I'm gonna see if I pick this one up here so it was a standard combo and uh, that was it took it home with me now I am headed through the Rockies with my sweet little Kia here I got a 300 kilometer trip today to make and on that trip I'm going to be comparing the four action cameras we looked at today in a road trip and a dash cam comparison so thanks for tuning in today if you're into that hit the subscribe button I'm the jaunting ape the world is yours my friends